Hello, we're hoping doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. And before we start today's episode, I do want to thank all of you guys who have downloaded the Upcomer eSports app. If you guys have not used it, links are down below as well. It's one of the new eSports apps out there, the best way to track the matches, as well as the brackets and all the live streams out there, and also a great source of news for all eSports in the game right now. So huge thanks to all of you guys who have used it. So far, a lot of great feedback on that app, and that will be the last sponsor for today's episode. So hope you guys all enjoy. Let's hop into the first story today. And I do want to say, before we get into the controversial drama news, I do want to share with all of you, of course, the major does kind of officially start today the major final playoff matches uh, you guys can be excited to see those and I will show you guys the quick matchups on screen as of you guys watch this video it should be early in the morning so all of these matches have yet to be played out so I'm very excited to say I'm gonna be live streaming all these matches tonight as well if you guys want to come by on YouTube we're gonna talk about CSGO hang out and chill and watch the major matches with my own commentary over them so hope you guys all enjoy now into the drama though and of course in big news we did have 100 thieves dropping KNG from their roster now of course I say dramatic news because nothing around KNG G has not been dramatic over the past year and a half so far. And of all the news stories around him, this is certainly the cream of the crop. As we talked about a couple of days ago on this channel, we had the controversy between him and Thorne. There was a little dispute over Twitter, and again, I did say in that video, I said it ended with Thorne definitely winning that fight. And of course, we had KNG mentioning some things that were by far and away a little bit too far, especially for a Twitter platform. Something that should probably, if you're going to say it, maybe say it in person where it can't be held against you. And 100 Thieves apparently did hold it against him as he was kicked off the roster. He is now gone from the organization based off that in that conversation alone. It was not based off what he had done in the past. They had actually, in the article with HLTV, they talked about this as well. They had warned him coming onto the team. They knew his background. They knew his history with the former Mortal Squad, with CLG's FNS. They knew his history, and they specifically warned him as to you know watch himself publicly, watch his manners as well as on, on social media, and he could not do that. So there was kind of a, a no, no, no really leniency here because he was warned beforehand. And yes, it was this comment on screen that did get him apparently kicked from the organization. Now, other rumors out there as well. Before we get into those, I do want to talk about CLG Lazarus. Actually, I think he's actually an esports lawyer. He kind of nailed this the same day that F uh, KNG actually tweeted this out. He said this in his tweet. He said the next player contract he has will have that clause in it. And uh, well, apparently he's uh, correct. As KNG is now no longer a part of 100 Thieves, now that's gone from Immortals, gone from 100 Thieves, who is next for him? He's certainly not going to be a wasted talent in the Brazilian scene and still a very good player. And whoever picks him up, though, they might have to have that clause in their contracts and they will be a bit wary going forward with this social media use, kind of like a Donald Trump card. Maybe just take away his Twitter for, for a day or two and see if he can handle himself in a better manner. Now, on top of that, rumors I, I talked about previously, rumors of, of course, players who could be joining this squad in the future for 100 Thieves. Of course, the one that comes to mind right now is current SK Gaming member Phelps, who is going to be leaving that roster sometime early in 2018. Once after the major comes around and Bolt actually joins the roster, Phelps will go to their bench and he's likely to be bought out by probably 100 Thieves. Now, other options out there could be Team 1 members of BIT, so BIT is currently on that roster as well, but I think the number one spot for them is definitely going to be on Phelps. Uh, of course, he's actually played with some of those guys in the past as well, so we'll see what happens with that situation, but 100 Thieves has now kicked KNG for a, a pretty good reason. I'm really proud of that as well, and good on them to actually follow through and actually get rid of him. And also in big news, it's kind of come as standard. Now every time a story is broken about organizations making roster moves, it does seem almost standard now that those organizations come out on Twitter and deny those moves as well. Of course, I'm talking about Virtus Pro allegations where Taz could be replaced, and maybe Neo in the future, and they were going to acquire Team King member Mihu. Thanks for the comment section, guys, down below. I, I was pronouncing it Mishu. It's actually Mihu, and apparently both organizations have now teamed up. We Again, I actually say that in kind of a jokingly manner, because apparently Decay did not contact them with enough time ahead of time to actually get a response on this allegation or on these rumors being said. We do have the Virtus Pro co-owner as well as the Kingwin founder as well, both coming out and saying that there is no transaction going to happen. Virtus Pro saying they had no intentions about removing Taz from the roster, and of course, Kingwin's owner saying they had no intentions of selling Mihu. But one one quick catch, guys. One quick catch, catch is they said they had no intentions of selling Mihu which does not deny the fact there is interest in Virtus Pro of Mihu. So there could be two, of course, conflicting sides there. And of course, if these organizations are in contact already, they don't want to leak that early on. They don't want people knowing this as well. So they could have easily contacted each other and said, let's both go on Twitter and deny this rumor as well. So again, it's almost come to the point where everything that's leaked is always going to be lied about by some side or the other. And so whether Decay is right or not, whether the story is right or not, guys, uh, we're going to find out sometime soon who is lying. And again, if we've had so many organizations, so many owners, so many players 
lie about these roster uh, moves, where we really don't know who to trust anymore. So as of right now, could Taz be leaving Virtus Pro? It's certainly possible. Who's going to replace him? It could be Mihu from Kingwin. It could be other players out there. But I'm going to stick with the news here. I'm going to stick with the K and trust him for per sources reasons, and we'll see what happens in the future with Virtus Pro. And one last thing I will say around these roster changes about Virtus Pro, it's kind of highly ironic the fact these are all around the same time. Of course, uh, Virtus Pro not doing well early 2018 or at all during 2017, but it does seem highly ironic. All these rumors out there are apparently happening around the same time where Mail.ru, if you guys don't know that, it's one of the largest, if not the largest, Russian internet companies in the, of course, in that country, have now bought out ES Force for $150 million. So new ownership of ES Force could mean, of course, new moves coming to Virtus Pro or SK Gaming, which of course SK has a more solidified roster. They know their moves are going to make early in 2018. But now Mail.ru does, of course, have whole ownership over ES Force, which means they do have whole ownership over Virtus Pro. So that could mean distinctive changes in that roster as well as that management team. It does seem kind of convenient those are all happening around the same time, and that could, of course, lend itself to those rumors out there. I think something could be happening. And also in huge CSK news, I do want to talk about with you guys this bit of a rumor out there soaring around misfits. Now, if you guys have not heard about this, I'll give you all the details as well as try and link some stuff down below for all of you to try and feed these rumors as to what could be happening to misfits in the future. And this is actually astonishing. And why I'm so surprised by this and actually excited for it is because apparently Kiyoshima will be involved. So, of course, we had last week, actually a couple weeks ago, the misfits did not re sign three of their members. That was, of course, going to be uh, the, the misfits trio, the better half of that team as well. It was Shazam, Sean Gary and sick. Ever since then, uh, Sean Gares and Shazam have taken to Twitter. They are now free agents. They have not been re-signed, which is kind of peculiar because when that trio left, you thought it was maybe a ploy to actually get those guys to be re-signed. We've had several pro players out there be kicked or not re-signed by an organization. They then take to Twitter to try and maybe convince their organization to maybe offer them back to be re-signed. I thought they were going to be re-signed by Misfits. It did not happen, and apparently Sick has already been signed by Team Rogue. So you take away him, and their ESL Pro League spot is now up in the air. Uh, Sick has now been signed to Team Rogue, Sean Gares and Shazam are still free agents, and the two players left in that roster, very peculiar here, is pay attention, they're both the French players, Amanek and Devo Duvec. So kind of keep that in mind as well. Now the only remaining players on Misfits are actually EU players. They're both French players who have played together for a long time. They've been back and forth between Envious and LDLC teams, Amanek and Devo Duvec. Devo Duvec, actually the guy who was previously on Envious before Scream got there. So they're now the only two players on Misfits, and now take it to the fact as well, we've had Kiyoshima and Dennis both tweeting out some very weird things and Kiyoshima of course being a French player a very very good French player who's been on the market for quite some time he's also been on note said on Twitter he will be having a team sometime after the major he announced several weeks ago his HyperX sponsor and he said he will have a new team after the major now on top of this as well to finish it all off guys who could be their fifth member so of course we have Amanek and Devo Dubek still currently signed by Misfits they are joined by Kiyoshima and Dennis and the fifth member apparently to be rumored would be Zai Wu now Zai Wu definitely not a, a more well-known name out there, but still a French player and allegedly has played with Kiyoshima in the past as well. So if Kiyoshima is going to be signed by Misfits, maybe they'll let him pick their fifth member and he chooses Zai Wu. So it would be Amanek, Devo Duvek, of course Kiyoshima, Dennis, and then Zai Wu at the five-man Misfits team. And Misfits, of course, would then go from North America to European Pro League. And we're not really sure how that would work. Optic Gaming, of course, they went from they went from North America to European Pro League. They got to play a full season in North America, though. So that could mean that Misfits does retain that spot for ESL Pro League but they get this French roster who gets to play out a full year in North American Pro League. If that makes sense to all of you, I hope it did. But that was a crazy CSK news. I love this kind of, you know, this rumor building kind of thing. I do think Misfits are preparing to make a European roster. Will that be their exact five-man roster? Probably not, but definitely some high speculation out there as to where Kiyoshima is going to go. And I'm so excited to see where he goes. He's been on the market for way too long, and I cannot wait to see who actually signs him. I just hope it's Misfits.